so what do you guys know or what do you understand from chemical kinetics just looking at the name and since you've done the chapter in school rough idea it's going to talk about um, energy changes the sort of like chem math behind it i don't know if that made math. sense but <laughs> So, like, like rate of change and all sorts of weird stuff. Correct. So, what did you guys learn from kinetics in physics? Like, what was kinetics all about? We didn't do it only. You did it motion. in standard. Obviously, a whole oh, yes, that we did. mechanics had kind of kinematics was called. Man, motion. Mostly. Motion, right? So, motion. Me, what were you focusing on? Like, what all did you study about? All I remember is projectile motion. That's all. projectile motion okay but what aspects of motion motion of particles velocity acceleration yeah. things like that right so so this chapter is studying about them on kind on a very small level uh, like on applied to chemical reactions basically so okay, okay. this chapter is going is related to speed of chemical reactions also called rate of chemical reactions basically how fast how slow a reaction goes so first thing is you look at how do we measure that you know experimentally theoretically all the equations related to that the mathematics behind it uh, then the second part is how is the rate affected so if you change the temperature what happens if you change the concentration what happens does it speed up does it slow down and at what uh, in what way does it speed up is it like exponential like graphs kaise hoga all of that stuff okay so that that's all there is in this chapter so it's more mathematics but all of that is concentrated around that okay um to start off like for any chemical reaction these are the calculations we need to know so one you need to know the feasibility of it feasibility matlab whether that's going to happen at all or not and how feasible is it like is it easy is it difficult do you need to spend energy on it all of that stuff and feasible the feasibility will be talking about in terms of cost economic cost or like energy no, no, no. cost energy cost like the okay. feasibility and you had already touched on it like we won't be talking about this in this chapter this is something we had done in thermodynamics you know gibbs free energy agar negative hai to we saw that it's feasible agar negative nahi hai to it's not feasible you need to spend some energy on it the second thing is uh, you're going to be looking at the extent of the reaction and this is something that you guys had dealt with in equilibrium chapter so extent matlab how far will the reaction go before the backward reaction takes over like when does it achieve that equilibrium so if it's towards the end of the reaction then you can know that okay ज्यादा कॉन्सेंट लाइक ज्यादा प्रोडक्ट्स ही मिलेंगे बट इफ द इक्म इज अचीव राइट एट द बिगिनिंग देन इट्स लाइक ओ वी बेरली हैव एनी प्रोडक्ट्स इज मोर रियक्टेंट ओन बिकॉज द बैकवर्ड रियक्शन टू गोवर सो द थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ इट इज द स्पीड ऑफ द रियक्शन सो दिस इज वॉट वील बी डीलिंग विथ इन दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर केमिकल कैनेटिक्स सो कैनेटिक्स इन मोशन इज स्पीड ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट speed of reaction is chemical kinetics that's all clear yeah. so how fast so this is relevant for practical in like in for practical purposes so if you are setting up a factory or even in a laboratory if you are trying to do an experiment you can't wait for hours on end or if you had to you'd like to know ki kitna time lagega is reaction hone mein when am i going to get the product and at what rate am i going to get it right all right so getting into it speed matlab we define it in terms of rate of a chemical reaction so whenever you come across rate of something rate of change or rate like basically rate the word rate 
what do you usually do? Rate of change of velocity, matlab, what does that mean? Momentum. 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 Wait, no. Rate of change of force is momentum. Rate of change velocity is acceleration. Sorry, my bad. But how do you calculate it? Like mathematically, how do you get the formula for that? V minus u is u minus v minus u by t. By t, right? Oh, so, so every, like we'll do initial minus final. Final minus initial. Minus initial final sorry. minus initial per unit time. So every time there is a rate involved, it's more often than not like per unit time. Okay. So since we are saying chemical reaction, let's look at a chemical reaction where reactants turn into products. So initially, you took a bunch of the reactants. So at T equal to zero, uh, the concentration of reactants, let's say, was R initial. And concentration of product, let's say, was P initial. Maybe you started measuring after the reaction has started, or maybe you mixed in some products initially, whatever. Then at t equal to t, like t seconds khadam ho gaya. So at time t, you measured rate was fine. Uh, the concentration of reactants was final and concentration of products was final. Okay. So then the rate of the reaction can be defined either in terms of uh, products or in terms of the reactants. So chemical reaction products are a reactant sehi, right? Because the reactants are getting used up, that's where you're getting the products from. So the rate of reaction is basically uh, how fast. So it is the rate of change of reactants, like concentration of reactants. which in turn will also be equal to the rate of change in of the concentration of products. Okay. So this is equal to here. So you can measure it either in terms of the concentration of reactants or in terms of the concentration of products. Okay. So if you had to put it Mathematically, how will you express this? Or let's do it step by step. Rf minus Ri is equal to Pf minus Pi. Per unit time, again, since we are calculating oh, the rate. Okay, so, the, huh, so individually both of them per unit time. Yes. So your uh, expression for rate of reaction is change of uh, the concentration of reactants. So it's going to be minus delta in the concentration of reactants per unit time, or it's going to be same as plus into the uh, delta concentration of products per unit time. I plus. Mm. So what is happening to the products? Like the forming. So to compare P initial and P final, kya ho uh, which one will be greater? Yes. PF Achha, will huh. be greater, right? So when you're hmm. checking final will be greater. Yeah. So when you're checking the change, PF minus PI is going to be positive. So you take the positive value. Uh, negative for reactants because Again, what is happening to the reactants? They're decreasing. Yeah. The quantity of reactant decreases as time goes. So this uh, difference is going to be negative. So rate calculate karne ke liye, you add a negative sign here. Okay. Cool. So this is the, uh, yeah. So when I say reactants and products, it's not collectively. You basically pick any one reactant or product. Okay. So basically, for example, 
if you had um Hmm. formation of water h2 plus o2 gives h2o plus 2o2 gives h2o so if you had to so if you had to express the rate of this reaction iska rate will be equal to you can pick any one component out of these i'm sorry Needs to be balanced. Huh. You can pick any one component out of this. Okay. So rate of this reaction will be equal to either it will be minus into delta of the like change in the uh, concentration of hydrogen per unit time. or you can say minus into delta change in the concentration of oxygen per unit time or you can take it in terms of product so plus change a uh, delta change in the concentration of water per unit time there is one more component to this so there is one more component the numerical rate yeah. molar value ha the usually whenever you do these calculations it's like you do it per mole so when mm. you have stoichiometric con coefficients in the reaction like 2h2 is reacting with one mole of oxygen to give water right so when you are calculating it in terms of hydrogen uh because it's two moles of hydrogen going into the reaction but you want to calculate it per molar so you divide this by half so whatever the expression is you divide it by the stoichiometric coefficient similarly this two moles of water so for h2o yeah yeah so it will be half into delta h2o per unit time so this is the correct uh, uh what do you call it expression to calculate the rate of this reaction but ma'am uh, the molar coefficients won't make a difference in the final answer right because if whether i take minus half delta h2o by uh, h2 by t or like h2o by t it, like the value is still similar to oxygen right i didn't get you. if i no like the value will like if I, okay so yeah if i like take without coefficients uh, can you put like some value there is like it's just it it's a little more more easier to comprehend value do as, these things have values uh numerical like value numbers for the concentration of hydrogen oxygen and all that yeah uh yeah yeah okay hang on i'll just see if there's like an example problem that we can do with values Hmm. Okay. Or like, yeah. Just as an example, I can take random values, right? Doesn't have to be. Yeah. Realistic. Um. So if the delta H two happened to be, um. So like, even if I take numerical values, this equation will hold only if I divide the stoichiometric coefficient. So okay. For this equation, if I just take delta H two by t. it will not be equal to uh, delta of o2 o by t because you're missing the coefficient yeah. molar yeah. stoichiometric coefficient to be half then it will be equal to this thing okay that's okay it. hi diti yeah so i was just taking an example of the rate equation only the main point is yeah so i went through it yeah so it needs to yeah you need to divide the coefficient because usually these calculations are done like per mole basis a uh, one small modification to this i put t here because change in time is t minus 0 is t but in general conventionally you take delta t cuz delta is the thing that is used to represent the change in time okay 
so basically like t initial minus t final like if you're not calculating right from t equal to zero if you're calculating from uh eight seconds after the reaction to 15 seconds after the reaction it needs to be t2 minus t1 so that's represented by delta t So delta of a thing divided by delta of a thing, physics may does it remind you of another equation of the way this is measured from the way that's measured. Like if I'm taking overall from the second second till like the 12th second or something like that over a range of a period of time. The ascent thing, no? <laughs> yeah. I don't know so what it's called. If I take it over a range of time, what, what rate does it give me? It's constant. No. So this particular expression like if i'm taking it over a range of time uh this is basically giving me the average rate if i want to measure the change at t equal to five seconds so that would be instantaneous rate because i'm measuring it at that particular point in this case, niche delta t hai na, I'm measuring it over a period of time. So that's why this is the this expression gives me the average rate. So ma'am, if you put um, minus delta H2O upon uh, two into delta T, so that's average rate. And if you put only T, that's instantaneous rate. Not only T. Like what, again, go, like take an example from physics. If you had to calculate the instantaneous velocity or instantaneous acceleration, what do you yeah. do? Hmm. You differentiate it, right? Yes. Or something like that. Yeah. Correct. So if I want to calculate the instantaneous rate, then my rate equation will change to differential of it so minus the concentration of the reactant upon dt like if one by two, multiplied by one by two that will be equal to minus differential of the concentration of oxygen upon dt that will be equal to plus half into differential of the concentration of water upon it. Okay, so this is what it looks like mathematically. So if I are taking it over a period of time, like delta T is T2 minus T1, you get the average rate. So average over the whole period of time. And if you are looking at it, like if you are calculating it at a specific instant, at T equal to five seconds, then you take the differential of the same thing. Very similar to your average velocity, instantaneous velocity. Yeah. Um, as your voice is breaking, you know, in, so if I keep my camera off, I'll try and keep my camera on as much as possible, but if I keep my camera off, I'm short. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like as long as I'm getting feedback from you guys, that's what matters. Clear about this? Anish, Shantanu, what about you guys? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So individually, these, these values, um, if you consider just this part, this is basically the rate of disappearance of the reactant. And this, like individually, is the rate of appearance of the product. 
So as the reactant disappears, you get the, like the product will appear because that's what the reaction is. That's why rate of disappearance of the reactant will be equal to the rate of production or appearance of the product. So half into delta of H2 upon delta T, this value is the rate of disappearance of hydrogen. Like how fast is hydrogen disappearing as it is being, you know, as it's reacting with oxygen? How fast is oxygen disappearing as it's reacting with hydrogen? And this is how fast is water appearing as a result of that reaction? Okay, so this is what all of this means mathematically. Mm. Let's see. So based on this, what do you think is the unit of rate? Uh, rate of a reaction ka SI unit kya hoga? Mole per second. Mole per second. Concentration ka unit kya hai? Is it purely moles or is it something else? No, it's not purely moles. Anyone can answer. How do you measure concentration? Like think of a situation. If I'm giving you, like if I'm taking a beaker of HCl and if you had to describe its yes, concentration, I... how do you do it. Could you repeat that? Like if I'm taking, let's say, a beaker of HCl and I want to describe its concentration. Here, blank HCl. This is what I'm giving you. How do I use Decimeter use? cube. Volume? <laughs> yeah. Concentration. Is lots of times. Come on. Think back to solutions chapter. Concentration is molar molarity. Correct. And what is molarity? Capital M. Huh? Capital M. <laughs> How you write it? What are the units of uh, molarity is mole per uh, it's what, what is the formula of molarity? Number of moles upon the volume. So mole per liter. There you go. So, rate ka unit kya hoga? Mole per liter second. There you go. So, it's mole per liter per second. You can also write it as uh, mole liter inverse second. This is how you usually the unit is expressed. So this is for, you know, when you have like ionic equations, when it is expressed in terms of concentration. Uh, but if your reactants and products are gaseous, then you have like, how do you express the concentration of gases? Isn't that done in, no, wait. Twenty four more number of moles upon twenty four dm cube, or twenty two point two dm. No, like think about it. Agar gas hai, to like, is the volume constant for a gas? No. So like, no ma'am. Yeah. So what unit do you do? You, is it preferable to figure out how much of a gas there is at a particular temperature? We have dealt with this when we were doing equilibrium chapter. So either it's concentration or it's dash for gases, specifically for gases. Hmm. 
गैसेस का कैरेक्टरिस्टिक क्या है लाइक समथिंग दैट लिक्विड्स एंड सॉलिड्स डोंट हैव और हाईली कंप्रेसिबल एंड दैट बेसिकली लाइक कंप्रेसिबिलिटी इन एक्सपेंशन इज समबडी यांश फ्री स्पेस दे हैव फ्री स्पेस they have free oh you i thought you were saying the unit and i was like how is free space a unit free space okay no think of physical quantities highly compressible high velocity cannot have a shape okay yes. pressure partial pressure oh my god <laughs> something is terribly wrong with our brains today yeah i can see that <laughs> so in the case of like when your reactants or products are gaseous the reaction is made of gaseous stuff you use partial pressure in that case pressure ka unit kya hai pascals Pascals is one. Is a unit usually you go with Pascal bar atm square per second. Yeah. So when you're using concentration, it's mole per liter per second. So this is concentration part of it. When it's a gaseous reactants or products, you use atmosphere per second. So, ma'am, if uh, the concentration is given in any other unit example it's given in pascals example is given in bar so do we convert it to atm and then solve the reaction it depends on the context again it's all mathematical mm. right so as long as you use the same units on lhs and rhs you're good that's the only thing you need to okay make. you can't okay. equate atmosphere and pascal so you need to change either one to the other unit. This is true for any formula, physics, chemistry, math, like any baby. Oh, if you have an equality, whatever units quantity you you have on LHS should be the same on RHS also. Okay. So okay, Mitali, Dhriti are done. And Shanti, you guys done noting? Then we'll go to the next part. Done, ma'am. मैथमेटिकल इक्वेशन इन रियालिटी the way you calculate rate constant is yeah like you keep noting like at every point of time you can measure ki kitna like what is the concentration of that particular substance you have like detectors and all that and then you can figure it out based on that so when you have the values obviously you note it down in a table like at t equal to something what is the concentration c equal to take all of that and plot it on a graph now because you are you can measure you can detect either the reactant or the product like any particular thing uh we have two graphs one for the reactants and one for the products because what is happening to reactants and products are completely different from each other reactants are increasing sorry decreasing products are increasing so let's like the first graph we measure in terms of the reactants and this one let's say we measure in terms of the products x axis pe kya hoga independent axis what do you usually measure on the x axis which quantity the time time is absolute and then correct. it's a uh, concentration yeah with respect to time you're seeing how the concentration increases or decreases so y axis pe hoga concentration okay now reactants ka concentration as time goes by it decreases 
So the shape of the graph that you usually get is something like this. It's like an exponential decrease. Yeah. And so corresponding to this, the rate like products ka concentration increases at time t equal to zero. Like initially, it's going to be zero. So initially reactants are decreasing very quickly slowly the rate becomes lower and lower as time is passing by right so same thing is reflected in the products also initially it was nothing then as initially the increase is a lot but as time goes by the increase also like gets slowed down the shape is a little wonky but it's like a smooth curve Slight modification here. Uh, we start measuring at t equal to zero. So, yeah. so this is how much you took initially. Products initially was zero. Then it now form hua. So this gets decreased. So rate of a reaction, like values and all, it's experimentally determined. So based on the theory that we have, uh, yeah. So if you had to find out the average rate, let's say from T1 to T2, if you average rate, find out karna to figure out like based on like T1, mein, what was the rate? What was the concentration of the reactant? Itna tha. Uh, after some time, concentration kitna tha, itna tha. So, subtract the concentration, subtract the time, divide them, and then you get the average rate of the reaction. And if you had to find out the instantaneous, then how do you find out the instantaneous at time at any particular time p if you had to find it on the graph you guys have done applications of derivatives not least the math kids so agar instantaneous rate find out karna so how do you measure like the rate of the rate of change kaise measure karte like on a graph Is Triti, Yan, Shantanu, anyone? How do you measure the rate of change? Divide by T. So, graph may, how do you measure the rate of change? Like, what do you do? One. Like, what is that quantity called? Other, like, again. Oh, oh slope. Slope, there you go. Yes. So if at this particular time, T, if you wanted to find the rate of change, you will have to it. Instantaneous, like suppose you wanted to find that time T, then you find what is the slope of this graph at that particular time T, and that'll give you the instantaneous. So R instantaneous will, you have to find the slope that is differentiated minus D R by T. And R average will give you like concentration ka difference, like uh, Y2 minus Y1 by X2 minus X1, the slope will give you R average.
the exact same thing will apply for product also. You figure out what time you wanted to find it in. Same time P1, T2. Then corresponding concentration of product kitna hai. Let you find that out. And then finding the slope of this line gives you the R average. And instantaneous liye, you find the differential at that particular point of time. Time t at this particular instant, if you have to find out, you have tangent jo hai, slope of this. This will give you R instant. So this is all about finding out the rate. So we saw the uh, expression for the rate of an equation in terms of reactants and products. And then we saw if there are stoichiometric coefficients, then how to handle it, like what, how does the rate, uh, the expression get modified. And experiment, like if you had to calculate the rate experimentally, this is what you do. Like you calculate the concentration at every single time. These are the shapes of the graphs that you get. And depending on what you need, whether it's uh, the average rate or the instantaneous rate, you do that particular mathematical operation on it. Yeah. Right. Uh, let me know when you guys have noted this. Right. Amazing, please don't write below uh, R is directly proportional to A raised to X and B raised to Y because I can't see. I'll do the next, like I'll write it side now, not doing this one. Okay, so we're discussing factors affecting the rate of reaction. So the first factor that we can think of directly affects is the concentration of the reactants, or it could be pressure when we're talking about gases. So the rate of a reaction increases if you increase the concentration of reactant, which makes sense, right? You increase the mm -hmm. amount of reactants that are there and the reaction also can get faster. So how they are proportional to each other, that is given by something called the rate equation or the rate law, which is uh, defined or which is derived in this way. So if you have a chemical reaction A plus B gives C plus B, then rate is directly proportional to the concentration of the reactants. Uh, the power to which it depends is x and y. Now this may or may not be equal to the stoichiometric coefficient. That's an important point that you guys need to remember. Yeah. So this particular- and, uh, Small r stands for the rate of reaction, right? Yeah. Or, you know, you can also write it as this. Or if you want to take away the proportional sign, what can you write this as? Rate equal to. So if, you, if I want to take away the proportional sign, make it into an equality, how should I modify this? Just add a constant. Correct. So let that constant be k. It's k into a concentration of a raised to the power x, concentration of b raised to the power y. So this K is called the rate constant. And this equation, this is called the rate equation of the rate law. So you can express it like this, or you can express it in terms of the constant. This one is more commonly conventionally used with the constant rate equal to. Um, X and Y. Are the stoichiometric coefficients or something else? That's what, like they may be equal to stoichiometric coefficients and they may not be equal. Like this X and Y, by how much it depends, this is like experimentally determined. In a lot of cases, they would be equal to stoichiometric coefficients, but you do find cases where that is not the case also. 
Okay, so where k is the constant of proportionality, you call that the rate constant. So rate law, ka, there is like a statement. So if once you guys are done noting this, I'll give you the statement for rate law. So go to the next page. Yes, ma'am. And Shantanu, let me know if you guys are not done yet, okay? So the rate law in words, so whatever you've written in mathematical equation, you just need to describe it in words. So it is the expression in which the reaction rate is given in terms of the molar concentration of reactants with each term raised to some power With that may or may not be equal to, so that particular power x and y may or may not be equal to the stoichiometric coefficients. Very complicated, but we are just describing that mathematical equation in words. That's it. I'm going to show the previous page first. So what's in here? Yeah, Dhriti? Mathematically, it's so much simpler. Exactly why maths exists. <laughs> maths is not simple. I'm saying this topic, may, this, the rate law is simpler mathematically than theoretically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Shantanu, what part did you need to note down? Because I was planning to write this particular expression again in the next page. So if there's anything else you want to note down, finish it up. No, there's uh, I was only uh, noting that. Okay. Ha, Mithali, I'll go to the next slide once Shantanu is done with noting this down. No, I'm done. Okay, cool. So same thing. So rate law, like if you had to express rate law, it is an expression, basically, that's what is the equation is. The reaction rate is given in terms of, so reaction rate, that is rate of the reaction is equal to, terms of molar concentration of reactants, there is rate constant into the concentration of the reactants, with each term raised to some power, so each of these concentrations is raised to some power, call that x and y. And this x and y may or may not be equal to the stoichiometric coefficient. So the rate law for every chemical reaction, it is experimentally figured out. Okay. So just like all the how you have boiling point, melting point, that way for every chemical reaction also, you have the rate law defined for it. Like it will be given to you. So in this, two points to note that uh, one, X and Y are determined experimentally. And another thing is X and Y may or may not be equal to A and B. In a lot of cases, you'll find that they're equal. You'll also find cases where they're not equal also. Uh, miss, for the first point, X and Y, is, it is predicted, right? Huh. Predicted. P-R-E. Predicted.
So this is your rate equation. Um, so we're looking at factors affecting the rate of reaction, right? The first one is concentration. So you're gonna have like a whole thing where how concentration affects it. The first thing is you figured out the mathematical formula, how exactly it is affected. So it's affected, it's directly proportional. And there's, it's ex, like, it depends on the exponents here. So that thing is called a uh, rate law. Okay. Now, depending on these numbers, X and Y, you have different reactions uh, classified as different, uh, in different categories. See so there is something called order of the reaction. So we're getting all of these categories of reactions completely depending on the rate law of that particular reaction. The first thing is the order of the reaction. What is order of the reaction? It's basically the degree to which the dependency happens. Okay. So if you have rate law, so rate equal to K into concentration of A power X, concentration of B power Y, Maybe you might have concentration of C power Z, whatever it is. Then the value X plus Y, like sum of the whole, all the exponents, this particular number is called the order of the reaction. I don't know how much you guys remember polynomials from grade 10. Do you remember something called degree of a polynomial? That's all right. No? Okay. If you remember it, it's fine. If you don't, it's okay. Then I'm not going to. Okay. So it's basically the sum of the exponents. Whatever number you get, that is basically the order of the reaction. So you have something called zero order reaction, first order reaction, second order reaction, third order reaction. That's it. If it doesn't depend on the concentration of reactants at all, if X is zero, Y is zero, Z is zero, then you get zero order reaction. If the overall, like suppose it depends only the concentration of only one reactant, then suppose let's say X is one, Y is zero, the overall X plus Y is one. So that's called first order reaction. That way. Yeah. Jiti? Yeah, ma'am. Cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So before we dive deeper into this, uh, there are like two types of reactions. So you have something called elementary reactions. And you have something called complex reactions. Okay. Mm. Do you have an idea? What do you mean by elementary reactions? What do you mean by complex reactions? Yes, no? No? Okay. So, uh, if suppose you have like a double displacement reaction, like ionic reactions, uh, do they happen in like multiple steps or do they happen like, are they pretty straightforward? Like if I add um, sodium sulfate to, or like silver nitrate to sodium chloride, what double displacement will take place, right? So do you think, you know, are they going to happen in like multiple steps or is it pretty straightforward? What do you think happens at a molecular level? So it's just exchange of ions, right? So the reactions that take place in one step, they are elementary reactions. Here. 
सो यूजली आयनिक रिएक्शन आर एलिमेंट्री लाइक एक ही स्टेप में हो जाएगा सो बेसिकली इफ आई एड सोडियम क्लोराइड एंड सिल्वर नाइट्रेट so as soon as i add two water they dissociate into ions you have na plus cl minus silver ions nitrate ions and then once they are in ionic format it's like basically just full of oppositely charged ions so immediately you're going to get silver chloride and sodium nitrate okay so it it's not very complicated it's pretty straightforward single step reactions they are elementary reactions uh complex reactions are like what you see in organic chemistry so if they happen in multiple steps jaise your sn2 reaction like sn1 sn2 uh yeah sn1 reaction sorry not sn2 so if they happen in multiple steps like pehle ion form karega fir some other reagent will act on it and then something else will happen so those kind of reactions that are kind of complicated they are complex reactions a lot of redox reactions also are complex reactions they happen in multiple steps oxidation reduction like first you need to have like some species being formed then that will attack your original reactant like all of that yeah that's it so in the case like this is pretty simple and straightforward ek hi step mein as soon as you mix the reactants they will act and you know they will form products but in the case of complex reactions because you have multiple steps uh, there are many factors that decide the rate of the reaction like uh, the steps may be consecutive or they may be simultaneous some reverse reaction side reactions taking place so if you have to calculate the rate of the reaction there is like a fast reaction there is like a slow reaction like this so many things happening simultaneously right so in this case um the slowest step out of all the multiple steps the slowest step is the rate determining step so whatever things we are discussing like order of the reaction the values x and y the reactants a and b like all of that like the rate law will essentially depend on the slowest step that's why that step is called the rate determining step okay all right so within this rate law again so for every reaction if it's elementary it's pretty straightforward you have your reactants that are there that will only determine the rate uh, if it's a complex reaction then you need to look at whichever is the slowest step that will be the rate determining step so that will decide on what reactant it's going to uh, depend and what are the values of x and y so now we have the rate law so depending on the order so if order equal to 0 then your rate will be equal to constant this is a constant so this is independent of any of the reactants so for like suppose you are uh, you are manufacturing something and it involves a zero at order reaction like suppose us reaction ka order zero ho gaya then if you want to affect it if you change the, the concentration of the reactants that's not going to affect the rate at all so you need to look at other factors if you want to like speed it up or slow it up okay this is an important thing 
So this is the order of a reaction. So quite simply, rate of reaction may the sum of these exponents is will give you the order of the reaction. So depending on the order, you can take action like you have zeroth order, first order, second order, kind of that. Then another important uh, property that you get from this is the molecularity of the reaction. So one concept is order. Now this is molecularity of the reaction. Okay. So molecularity ka definition is, okay. So before we talk about what is molecularity, how do chemical reactions take place? Like suppose I mix two substances. Okay, a beaker hai. Usme, I put some blue color reactants and I put some red color reactants. So if I want a chemical reaction uh, to occur between both of these reactants and form products, so uh, what should happen to the molecules? Like what should the reactant molecules do to kickstart or to make that reaction happen. Yeah, Midali said they should interact, absolutely. So how do they interact? Like, what do you mean by they should interact? Huh, if it's ionic, Yes, they break down into constituent ions. What is like, same thing, if they are covalent also, they need to interact with each other, right? And just breaking down is not going to ensure the reaction will take place, right? After that, what should these individual ions do in order to form the final product? Intermolecular forces, yes. So the word I'm looking for is the individual molecules should collide with each other. Yeah, in order for them to form a bond, in the first place, they need to like be close to each other. Na? Tabhi to chemical bond form hoga. So the collision will take place between molecules. Tabhi the reaction will happen. So molecularity, iska definition, uh, iska definition is the number of the reacting species. That are taking part in the reaction. This is defined specifically only for elementary reactions. Here. So basically the funda behind molecularity is uh, you're checking like how many molecules, so it's basically the number of molecules that should simultaneously collide. That must simultaneously collide. to, to uh, bring about that chemical reaction. Okay. Like how many molecules or, you know, how many species of molecules should simultaneously collide so that the chemical reaction will happen. And it's, like in the case of elementary reactions, because it's one step, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Like how many other reactants are there? Those reactants should collide with each other. Tabhi re chemical reaction ho jayega. So it's pretty straightforward there. But when it comes to complex reactions, so whenever you have multiple steps, whichever is the most important step you have, like without that step, the chemical reaction will not happen or that step is crucial for the product to form. 
So that's like the rate determining step of sorts. So in that particular step, how many molecules should simultaneously collide to for the chemical reaction to happen so that that product can be formed at the end of this thing. Yes. So for example, um, so depending on the molecularity, whether it's like one, two, three, depending on the number, you again have different types of reactions. You have unimolecular, you have bimolecular, trimolecular, all of that stuff. So for example, you have ammonium nitrite, NH4NO2, breaking down to give nitrogen plus water. So how many molecules of the reactants are required for this reaction to take place? How to? One. There's only one molecule of ammonium reaction, like if it meets the necessary criteria, it's gonna break down into these two products. So this is a unimolecular reaction. And uh, 2HI breaking down into H2 plus I2. So in order to get hydrogen molecule and iodine molecule, how many molecules of hydrogen iodide are required? There are two molecules. Agar, like if you have only a single molecule of HI, you're not going to get uh, H2 and I2. You need minimum two molecules to collide so that they break down into H2 and I2. So this is an example of a bimolecular reaction. Okay. Uh, similarly, if you have NO plus O2 gives nitrogen dioxide. This is an example of a trimolecular reaction. So you, you will not get your required products unless you have two molecules of NO and one molecule of oxygen. You need minimum of three molecules for this reaction to take place. This is a trimolecular reaction. Okay. So order is different. Huh, this is similar to formation of H2O. H2O ke liye, let's look at that reaction. H2 plus O2 gives H2O. If I want one molecule of water, I will need, huh, this would I think would come under uh, bimolecular because you need at least one hydrogen, one oxygen, you can get one H2O. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So molecularity is quite literally the number of molecules that must simultaneously collide. But order is basically how is the rate depending on this particular, uh, the exponents of the concentration. Okay. So based on what you know about order of the reaction versus molecularity of the reaction, what are the possible values for order versus molecularity? Like order, we're saying like it can be zero, it can be one. So order can also be a fraction because it's an experimentally determined value. But molecularity, can molecularity ever be a fraction? Like what sort of numbers, can molecularity be zero? Yeah, Driti and Shantni, you guys with me? Are you guys there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. No, yes, ma you guys have been like really quiet for a while. So I'm just wondering if you're following or not. Yeah, right. No, no, ma'am, I'm following, but there seems to be really bad net here because the rains or something. So if I talk, then I can't hear you. If I keep my camera on, I can't hear you. Acha. Okay. At least chat pe bhej de na, where Mitali has been sending. It works. Yeah. Hmm. Anshan Shantanu? Oh, 
Okay, so molecularity ke, what are the possible values? Like, can it be zero? Can it be a fractional value? Ho sakta hai kya? No, it, it can't be any of those values because it's quite literally, it's the number of molecules. So molecularity will always take natural numbers. It will always be one, two, three, four, those kind of values only. Uh, what else do we have about this? Huh. What can you say about molecularity versus rate? So, if molecularity is greater, will rate be greater or lesser? Like, if you need few molecules versus if you need a lot of molecules to collide in order for the reaction to take place, how do you think that will affect the rate of reaction? Like greater the molecularity, faster the rate or slower the rate? Hmm. So Mitali, the logic that you gave, so Mitali says greater is the rate of reaction because if there are more molecules, like the collisions will be more because there are more molecules. So that relates directly to the concentration. So the same molecules, you're increasing their quantity. So you have more number of collisions. Now molecularity is you have like how many species the number of molecules of the reacting species that needs to take part. So think of this in the sense of like, suppose you have a group project and different people have different responsibilities. So which kind of groups will be efficient if you have just a group of two or three or a group of like seven, eight people, in which case is your project going to be easier? Like, is it easy to coordinate between two, three people or is it easier to coordinate between like seven, eight people? Of course, two, three people. It's easier to coordinate between two, three people, right? Lesser people. It's the same thing. So if the molecularity is high, it means that you need a lot of molecules to collide simultaneously. Right? So that decreases the rate. So if the molecularity is right, high, the rate of reaction is typically smaller. If you just need two molecules, two types of molecules to collide, then there's a greater chance of those two molecules colliding. If you have like seven, eight different types of molecules, like if, if it's like a, if molecularity is four or something, then it's not necessary that all four of them will collide, right? You may have two of the same type, one of an, an, another type colliding in which case you're not getting the product. So that's affecting the rate of reaction that way. So think of molecularity in that sense. The logic that you had given Mitali that more molecules means more collision. So that is directly, you're talking about the concentration. So increasing the concentration, matlab, you're taking more quantity of the reactants and that's how you're increasing the number of molecules and increasing the number of collisions. So for molecularity, it is the number of reacting species. So molecularity two maglab, you need two molecules to collide that way. Okay. So this is an important point that needs to be clear. So greater the molecularity, slower is the rate. And the reason is that it's difficult to have like multiple species colliding simultaneously. I'll put the reason also that you can note it down. It is difficult to have multiple species colliding simultaneously.
So yeah, it's direct analogous to a group project. You have seven, eight people doing seven, eight different things. Even if one person has failed to show up, it's going to affect the overall project. As opposed to two, three people, it's easier to coordinate. Okay. As an example, uh, like contrast between uh, elementary versus complex reactions. Like suppose you have this reaction, uh, KClO3. plus six FeSO4, plus three H2SO4, gives KCl, plus three Fe2SO4 thrice, plus three H2O. So here, potassium uh, chlorate is oxidizing ferrous sulfate into ferric sulfate it itself is getting reduced to KCl. So you can look at this. Okay, this is a direct example of, um, you know, how order is not directly related to the stoichiometric coefficients. So stoichiometric coefficient wise, it is one plus six, seven plus three, 10. So this is not a 10th order reaction. This is in fact a second order reaction. And like, because it has like so many multiple molecules required to produce the products. And also it's not like all 10 of them must collide simultaneously. This happens to be a second order reaction, which means that uh, this is a complex reaction taking place in multiple steps. And the rate determining step happens to have an order of two, which is why this comes under a second order reaction. Okay. So this is how the analysis of chemical kinetics, because you can't just stick a reaction under a microscope and see how the atoms are reacting. Like the atoms and molecules are much too smaller for that. So by uh, figuring out the, like by analyzing the kinetics behind the reaction, like figuring out the rate of a reaction and how it relates to the concentration of the reactants and products. By doing all of that, you can figure out the mechanism of the reaction itself. So directly from the stoichiometric coefficients, the order, like it, 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 you're getting it to be 10 but it's not a 10th order reaction, it's a second order reaction. So from that, you get an idea that, oh, then it's not happening in one play, one step. All of them are not required simultaneously. It is a complex reaction taking place in multiple steps. That's the kind of analysis that you get. Yeah. Similarly, another example that we have um, is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. So, do you guys remember the reaction? Hydrogen peroxide car decomposition, H2O2. What does it decompose as? What do you get? Do you get hydrogen and oxygen? Yeah. Water and oxygen. Yeah, you get water and oxygen. This is the famous elephant toothpaste reaction. Yeah. So if you do this in the presence of iodide ion in alkaline medium, the rate of this reaction is not just H2O2. The rate experimentally, as you found out, the rate happens to be equal to rate, which is half of uh, 
so minus d concentration of h2o2 divided by dt the rate law for this happens to be k into the concentration of h2o2 into the concentration of i minus so from the rate law you can see that um, you know like the concentration of iodide ion is also like equally important uh but this happens to be a first order reaction because it takes place in multiple steps so what happens in that reaction is basically h2o2 first interacts with iodide ion gives water plus io minus it is the hypo iodate ion i think not clear on the names but yeah and in this in step 2 another molecule of h2o2 collides with the io minus to give another molecule of water i minus and o2 so out of these two this happens to be a slower step and so this is the rate determining step and that's why you can see from the rate law that it depends on h2o2 and i minus so the point of all of this is basically to say that you know like the order of reaction it's like experimentally determined and you can't figure out the rate law or the order of the reaction purely by looking at the reaction it needs to be experimentally determined because it depends on all of these different factors of you know what mechanism is it going through and like where is the crunch factor like the slowest step kya ho raha hai like it depends on all of those things so it okay yeah. so yeah purely just by looking at the reaction uh you can't figure out the rate it depends on the catalyst and depends on how many steps there are like all of these factors okay um so based on this Well, why is the first one a second order reaction? The potassium chlorate, this one. Again, same reason. Again, this is like the overall reaction. Like basically, you know that if I take some potassium chlorate, some iron sulfate, and make them react in the presence of sulfuric acid solution, I'm going to get these products. And in order for the reaction to take place, I need this much quantities of it because. law of conservation of mass and all that but what exactly is happening at the molecular level it's not like all 10 molecules are you know colliding simultaneously and there's like that cartoonish explosion going on and then they're rearranging and coming out that's not happening it's happening in multiple steps like this is simple simpler that's why we have expanded upon this so it's not as simple as two molecules of h2o2 combining like colliding to give water and oxygen no like iodine needs to get into the mixture and different steps would have different rates depending on the stability of the individual ions and all of those factors so so this is a first i i'm sorry finally the thing got like oh shit shut up uh so 
why is this of i still don't get on what are you exactly basing the order of reaction because like you said that x plus y give equals to the order of the mm. reaction but like i still can't figure out if there is a question how would i calculate the order of reaction by just looking at the reaction generally it's like yeah just by looking at the reaction you can't you will get the order of the reaction only from the rate law Uh, this, like, okay, this I've written it simply. Uh, so this is a first order reaction with respect to H two O two and with respect to I minus. So like, दोनों का exponent happens to be one, but you will get the order only based on the rate law. You will like that's why in in the rate law also we have mentioned x plus y is ordered, but what are x plus y? they are experimentally determined uh, numbers that are affecting the rate of the reaction you have cases where x and y are fractional values also they are not always numbers you won't always get purely you know like 0 1 2 3 like that you will also there are cases where it um, it is like first reactant to the power 1 by 2 second reactant to the power 3 by 2 ऐसे भी हो सकता है सो दैट इज वाई दिस इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दैट आई स्ट्रेस्ड अपॉन एक्स एंड वाई आर एक्सपेरिमेंटली डिटरमाइंड दे मे और मे नॉट बी इक्वल टू द स्टॉक्योमेट्रिक कोफिशियंट यू कैन नॉट गेट द रेट लॉट जस्ट बाय लुकिंग एट द इक्वेशन इट इज एक्सपेरिमेंटली डिटरमाइंड एंड इट इज यूनिक टू दैट पर्टिकुलर रिएक्शन बिकॉज इट्स नॉट एज सिंपल एज यू नो जस्ट टेक द रिएक्ट एंड रेज इट टू दी पावर इट्स नॉट लाइक दैट because we are literally looking at practically speaking if i mix both of these substances how is the rate affected so rate of the re like how is the concentration affecting that rate of reaction so if you want to get deeper into it abhi reaction hone ke liye the molecules need to collide with each other right and molecules are not existing within a vacuum so if a reaction is taking place in solution uh, the movement mobility of the molecule depends on or the ion depends on uska size and how hydrated it is like all of these different factors if it's a slow moving molecule then it's not going to collide as fast as a fast moving uh, ion or a species right so that's why yes, it like it doesn't purely depend on the number that you take in the reaction it depends like it is unique to a reaction it depends on you know the mechanism of the reaction itself like you need to determine it experimentally okay so so yeah like all of these are cases or examples to show that you can't just look at like order is its own thing it's a unique property of the reaction or a unique property of the rate of the reaction rather here yeah. so just comparing order and molecularity there are some points of differences mom but why are we comparing them aren't they two different things completely yeah there are two different things that's why we are bringing out the differences between them because if you look at it roughly like the same confusion that you got like people might get it and that is quite natural because molecularity also depends on you know number of molecules you are taking of the reactants order of the reaction also you are like it's related to the reactants now this may or may not be equal to the stoichiometric coefficient so that's why but they are not the same thing so there's a little bit of like differences so when it comes to order it may this is an experimental quantity it's not something you can see you can get just by looking at the reaction and it can be either like order can be zero or fraction or any number any positive number it is simply the power 
to which the rate is depending on the concentration of the acid. Uh, but when it comes to molecularity, so molecularity can take only natural numbers. order can be a whole number or a fraction this can only take natural numbers it cannot be zero it cannot be fraction so this is experimental and this is more of a theoretical concept you're literally looking at the reaction looking at the mechanism and then determining ki acha ye sare species chahiye then so order you will find order for every single reaction this is applicable to both uh, like elementary and complex reactions in the case of complex reactions you will get the order from the rate determining step but molecularity you're going to like molecularity is applicable only for elementary reactions because in the case of complex reactions there are multiple steps and there are species formed in the middle of it like so it becomes pretty subjective in figuring out like okay how many things are required single step reactions it's pretty easy cuz you just see okay these many reactants are required so this is the thing uh another major point of difference is um in the case of a complex reaction the order is given by slower step that we already discussed so for complex reaction order you get from the slowest step that's the rate determining step makes sense right order is uh something that you get from the rate of the reaction so um now molecularity is applicable for elementary reactions right so if we consider each of these steps to be different elementary reactions um you can figure out okay like the molecularity of the slowest step will be equal to the order of the slowest step please please don't go below this i won't be able to see no this is the last um could you explain molec um, sorry my bad molecular molecularity of the slowest step is equal to uh, order of the slowest step yeah so this is again obviously when we talking about slowest step applicable for complex reactions um so in complex reactions they happen in multiple steps right so if we consider each of these steps as individual reactions like this is one elementary reaction this is a second elementary reaction that way uh the elementary reaction corresponding to the slowest step so that particular reaction may whatever happens to be the molecularity like slowest step may how many ever molecules are involved like the number of molecules involved in the slowest step you can think of it this way now because the whole reaction is um depending on the slowest step like the rate of the entire all the steps depends on the slowest step right think of it this way like if you were running a relay race uh there are four people four people running at different speeds 
now if you want to assess whether you know uh, like overall speed kitna hoga it would depend on like the crutch is the slowest speed runner right because unless that like no matter how fast the others run if you are being if the team is being held by the slowest person the overall team score is also going to depend on that particular slowest person right so think of it that way so even if you have multiple steps the slowest step is the rate determining step so whichever step is happening slow whichever individual reaction is slowest occurring one whatever molecules are involved in that particular step they are going to affect the rate of the overall reaction so order is again connected to the rate of the reaction so the molecularity the number of species involved in this lowest step will be equal to the order of uh, the overall like lowest step yeah, that happens to be the case yes ma'am got it like these are just characteristic or observations that uh, with, that you can find out like on these two quantities or these two characteristics okay so after this we'll be looking at integrated rate equations it's 520 right so integrated rate equations like we'll be looking at specifically uh calculations for zero order reactions for first order reactions for second order reactions i don't think second order is there i think you have zero and one only but yeah so that we'll continue in the next class yeah so if you want you can go over this uh, in your own time prioritize term one syllabus if you're like bored or if you have completed one chapter and you want to change your pace or something then come back to it but prioritize term one chapter this you can keep it on the back burner just to you know digest it to get more confident you can do some questions from this but uh, yeah term one chapter is the main priority okay ma'am i'll do